OTDR limits consist of settings that determine whether the trace will pass or fail and what those criteria are. There are several pages. The first page are cabling standards. We have ANSI TIA ISO IEC. Uh, there's two different ISO IEC standards, 14763 and 11801 and then EN or Senelec, so this is the European norms group of standards. So these are based on the cable length and the amount of connectors and splices in the fiber. So what happens is for each of these, um, so if I, for example, I choose the TIA and hit OK here, it's going to come up and give me options for connector and splice loss, as well as the attenuation uh, for the fiber itself. When the OTDR runs a trace, it will actually determine the number of splices in connectors it sees based on the event table and add up those. So if example, it saw two connectors, it would allow 1.5 dB for each um, for those connectors in total. And it would allow 0.3 dB for each splice, multiplying it by the number of splices it sees. Then for the length of the fiber, it allows um, a certain amount of loss per kilometer. So this is um, essentially similar to the loss budget calculator of an OLTS like our FiberTech, um, where you put in the number of connectors and splices because with the FiberTech type product, you don't know what's there. But since the OTDR can measure and see the number of connectors and splices, it does that automatically. The user does not need to enter the number of those. And then of course it obviously knows the length of the fiber so that's how it can determine the allowable loss um, by length if we go to the next pages we have um, examples of different ethernet speeds and so the first number is the speed followed by the wavelength followed by the type of fiber so this first example is one gig sx is short wavelength or 850 nanometer OM1 uh, type fiber, so that's our classical 62.5 micron fiber. This is one gig, 850 nanometer OM2 fiber. Um, in this example here, we have one gig LX, which is 1300 or 1310 OMX, um, which would be OM1234, it doesn't matter. So it's specified for any type of multimode fiber. Going on, we have 10 gig, 40 gig, 100 gig, um, SR is uh, 850 nanometers, LX is 13, um, 10 nanometers, and E is 1550 nanometers. So we have various different options there for the wavelength, uh, I'm sorry, for the applications. If we choose manual, then it's just like we saw with the Cable uh, cabling standards where we can choose the max connector and splice loss, uh, system ORL, which is optical return loss, or the max attenuation coefficient. And then on the next page, we can also choose the total link loss. So you can check or uncheck any of these options. So if it will only pass fail test against the options that are checked. So if I unchecked all of these, for example, and went to the second page here and checked link budget 1310, which is a single mode one, and it's set to 6.3. So right now it would only fail if the total link loss is over 6.3 dB, ignoring all other parameters. So I can edit that and change it down to maybe 3 dB. And now it will fail only if the loss of the link exceeds 3 dB, ignoring all the other parameters for the connector and splice losses, etc. Um, I can load defaults and it will change these numbers back to the default values that we've defined.